Hey YouTube, <clears throat> yeah, I kind of uh, give you a little heads up on this build the other day. Well, I started into it yesterday. So the Orlando Hunter PO2 kit, which is the Toyota Tundra, that's uh, true to scale with the IFS front suspension. And I'm guessing I'm about halfway through the manual. And what a awesome build. The the quality of the parts. I mean, I've built a lot of kits. Actually, about all my kits. I normally don't buy ready to run, so they're always kits. So I've built all kinds of kits. And this is a very good, high-quality kit. Uh, I haven't had any issues. Parts fitment. You know, like I said, quality. The only thing I did do different comes with this little screwdriver Phillips screwdriver I'm not using it I have a better one with a magnetic tip which is real good for these tiny little screws if I get this to focus yeah I mean look at the, the these are the bearings I mean rod ends I think this is the steering rod so anyways, looking here, yeah, I have the uh, I have the front suspension put together. I don't know if I, this is showing pretty good here. Let me see here. Yeah, so I have the the front. This is the whole front motor gearbox, and it's a locker, so this isn't going to spin yet. Suspension arms. steering the only well and I, I hope it's not an issue I'm going to find out here in a little bit but I'm going to bring this to somebody's attention just in case there is an issue because I'm going to go back to it the first uh, where am I at here the first steps were you know putting the front gearbox the motor together and I hope it focuses on this but I mean, I oriented my parts exactly how they're saying here and how the front gears go in. This picture looks right, how I had it upside down and, and the gear is on the side. But when you look at this picture over here, of course I have the arms and everything on it now. If it was actually supposed to be looked at upside down like this, I mean, my gear is on this side where it's saying no-no. But all the rest of the pictures look right, so I'm hoping maybe the picture is supposed to show it like this. So I'll know that when that gets put in and then the rear end, and then if the front end drives in a different direction, then, yeah, I have it wrong. So then the rear end... You know, the rear is linked, which, okay, it's not true to scale with the, uh, let me try to get this to focus here. Oh, I didn't want to do that, did I? So there again, you know, it's locked, and I can get it to spin. Full ball bearings throughout. Brass gears. I'm not sure if the axles are just metal. I, I don't think they're stainless. They're a softer compound, but... So there's the rear end, and I believe, uh, yeah, I put the bumpers together. I put the front bumper, the little pull, pull tabs, and then we'll see later on how the body mounts. I think the body mounts in the back, and then it has this little like locking mechanism that the front of the body snaps down in, and that's what holds it in. So that's kind of a cool idea. No screws hold that body down. Rear bumper. And I didn't put the pull, like, tow hooks in the back. Um, I lost one. <laughs> and I don't know where it's at. So I didn't put them in, but I did put the trailer hitch assembly in it. Because I think that's, uh, I think my plan is, I'm probably at some point going to build a little trailer for this. And I'm going to get me another one of these. I just haven't decided if I want the Jeep or I like the Pajero too. So we'll see. But let's get one done first. 
frame rails that's where we were getting to next that's about my next steps metal scale like frame rails that's just going to be super cool but why I really oh here let's show the body size I put the tires together too put the foams in them I did not glue the tires I've heard stories both some do some don't here's the body to give you kind of an idea of the size of it oh so I bought this with the 4DL 2.4 gigahertz three channel radio that goes with them so it included a 4-in-1 receiver some LEDs speaker the receiver, of course, and the ESC is like a 4-in-1 built-in unit. So I pretty much know, okay, yeah, you know the speaker, and then uh, I didn't get it out. Uh, here, I can grab it right here. So this must be the receiver uh, speed controller slash uh, light hookup, too. So what I've come up with... I'm probably not going to do the lights yet, but I don't know. We'll see. This little board right here is the PCB board for the lights. So what you have to do, and you're going to love this. Uh, let me put this stuff out here. I'm trying to get this focused on that. So here are the... 5 millimeter. there's four 5 millimeter LEDs. I'm going to guess probably the main headlights, and I, I don't know where the other two would go. But now what we have is a negative, negative strand of wire and a bunch of colored wires for your positive sides. And I'm going to get this wrong, but I think they're called SMD. These are the SMD LEDs. I think these are clear, these are yellow, these are red, and these are orange. I took one out and I'm not going to do it again because I'll probably have a hard time getting it out. I'm going to show you with my tweezers. That little thing in there itself is the SMD LED. That is the front of it. That's the LED. So you have to flip, the. this is just in a plastic case, these things come out of here. You flip these over and have to solder these wires to the positive and negative sides of them. And then they get wired, soldered to the board in the appropriate places. You know, headlights, uh, running lights, turn sig left turn signals, right turn signals, brake lights. I believe it even has backup lights. Whew. Okay, now why I said I might do it. My wife has a harbor freight in the town she works in, and she stopped there before work this morning, and lo and behold, she got me a lighted magnifying stand. So it's a big round magnifying stand that's lit. And another set of helping hands. I get this stuff put back. Uh, helping hands. I have one back here. Helping hands. You know, with the... So she's getting me another... Another one of those. So, I don't know. I'm gonna... I'm gonna really think about it. I really want to get this thing going and drive drivable, but... You can put them together without putting the lights in them. It's just if you go back and do it later, you're going to take some things apart. These little SMDs go in these little spots, you know, on the bumper. They go in in the back, and there's a little plastic tab that holds them. There's not any in the back. Oh, uh, There's some more. Oh, that's actually where I'm at. There's some more brackets that as you put everything together, these little LEDs go in them. So I don't know. I, I'm really, really, really thinking this thing's going to go together to get it done, at least chassis running, without lights. But I'm going to tackle this because I really think that just to be the whole scale realism, it, it needs the light kit. So 
that's that. that. That's the speaker, which we're all familiar with that. I actually have the Orlando sound unit. Let me see if I can get this moved. I actually have the Orlando sound unit in the, uh, the doodle bug back there, so it's the same. Except I think with this one, the sound unit must be built into the receiver. There's no, no other board for the sound unit, so... Yeah, so anyways, well, that is that. Like I said, we'll, uh, I'm going to continue on with the build. When she gets here, I'll see if I want to tackle the lights or not. Maybe I might try to solder a couple to see how they go. If it works good, then I'll, I'll roll with it. If not, we'll just keep moving and get us a rolling chassis together. So stay tuned for uh, segment two when I get that far. Talk to you later.